Welcome to the wonderful world of super hots. Here's your brown maruga, primo pepper, as you can see, smaller than the Carolina Reaper, and brown fatale. Super hot peppers. I'm always asked, what do you do with these super hots? And I laugh when I say, you eat them. But all joking aside, you want to start sparingly if you're new to super hots. Half a pod or one pod will flavor a whole pot of chili or a pot of spaghetti sauce. Or we just made some pasta vizzol yesterday, beans and little didi macaroni, also called pasta vizzol. Depends on how you pronounce it. Okay, let me show you what we're doing here as far as preserving the super hots. Here's our Excalibur dryer, dehydrator. And we've got a bunch of different super hots and a couple of Peter peppers to cut the, cut the heat down. Here's some of our frozen super hot, so we can enjoy them all year long. And me and Penny just did these yesterday. These are primos, and they're dehydrated. And we're going to mix these babies with cayennes, jalapenos, and peppers that are not quite so hot to take the edge off. Also, a friend of mine at the Hot Pepper gave me a great idea. We're going to mix some allspice in to also take the heat off. Now a few other things, here's some of our dehydrated ghost peppers, actually we have some buccalokia in here, and again we'll mix them up with peppers that are not quite as hot. Now if you're not a gardener, we do have a limited supply of dry Carolina Reapers and citrus wood smoke Carolina Reapers. Just drop me an email and I'll tell you how to get these because they're not on our website. Okay, and here's some, I believe, hickory smoked peppers. These are Nanja March, super hots. Has a great aroma. And uh, these are actually from uh, Joiner's Peppers, uh, my favorite smoked pepper company. So this is a little bit about super hots and what we do with them to dry them, freeze them, preserve them. Let me show you how we cook with them. That's what this video is really about. Follow me into the kitchen. Now, these just happen to be some jalapeno poppers that Penny just made. Ground turkey, you season with some super hot powder. And other spices topped off with some cheddar cheese. Looks delicious, huh? Okay, now, how do you eat these super hot? They're so hot. Well, one tip is I wouldn't chop them up and put them into a, into a meal unless you're going to eat the meal yourself. Some members of the family may not like it that hot. So we make them on the side and start introducing them gradually into your diet. Now here's a couple ideas. Tonight we're making spaghetti and meatballs. There's my homemade sauce from Penny's Tomatoes. And there's no super hots in there because we have company coming over. So what I do with the super hots, I fry the meatballs on the side. I don't add them to the sauce sometimes for a different little wrinkle. We just eat them, like my dad taught me, calls them white meatballs. Here's your Maruga super hots that were cooked on the side and added in so that most of the meatballs aren't too hot for the guests or family members that just don't like it that hot. And here's the sausage. Fry in with red sweet peppers. Again, there's your yellow Maruga. And it's all cooking on the side. So again, it's not part of the olive oil and the sweet peppers and it's for those who like it real hot. Now here's probably my favorite tip in family tradition. Back in the day, when we first got into hot peppers, some members of the family just didn't like it too hot. These are all super hot. Carolina Reapers, um, gold, gold marugas actually, yes. And, a, and I believe there's a red maruga in here too. So we fried on the side, garlic and hot peppers and olive oil. Now, the reason this is key is that I'm going to add it to my spaghetti on the side and my spaghetti sauce and I'll have the super hot peppers. Now Penny doesn't like it quite this hot so she'll use her dried uh, hot pepper mix that she makes herself personally. But again, we started this just so that it was on the side and it wouldn't overpower a meal. Now all the members of my family, brothers, sisters, my mom and dad used to do it, aunts and uncles, everybody fries the garlic and the hot peppers on the side and then top their spaghettis with it, top their pizza. It's great on Mexican food. It's great on sandwiches like cheesesteaks, hoagies, etc. 
This will go in the refrigerator tonight, and then we'll have it all week long, or several days, depending on how aggressively we use it. Cool idea. Try that. Garlic, super hot peppers, and olive oil. So there you have it. Italian meal. We're getting ready for some company coming over. I'll tell you a quick funny story. Who's coming for dinner? Chris Justice and his wife Suzanne. We met Chris many months ago. He came in the house and stole a new flat screen TV. He's got the ponytail going. He's got the New York attitude. He's from Long Island. And Chris says, hey man, you know with the Steven Seagal ponytail, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah sure, what's that? Are you Pepper Joe? I start laughing. Penny starts laughing. Penny goes, that's not a big deal. She always keeps me in check. And uh, Chris shows me pictures on his phone of Pepper Joe's pepper plants. So he's been a big fan. He told all his buddies back in New York, I installed Pepper Joe's TV. Cool guy. Again, we're having him over for dinner. And uh, we're going to have some vino, some pasta. Uh, the rest of the meal you've seen in a real good time. So anyway, that's a little bit about eating super hots. If you have any particular meals you'd like to see us make, just drop me an email or drop me a YouTube uh, message and I'll make, see if we can fit it into the schedule. But cooking with super hots, what's the key? Use them sparingly. A little bit goes a long way. Pair up the different flavors with the different meals just like you would a fine wine with a good meal. Okay, that's uh, Super Hots 101. Thank you for watching and visit PepperJoe.com.